Good morning, all. Good morning. It is so good to see you all here this morning. Welcome and thank you for joining us as we have been blessed again by our Lord to gather together to bring glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, the Christ Jesus. But before we proceed with the worship, we have several announcements that need to be made, and Jim Drummond will start that announcement off here this morning. Good morning. morning. Yesterday, there was a concert that took place in the park behind the Pal Center, and the artist, Christian artist, who played his guitar and sang was Noah Cleveland. And he is going to be here tonight at 6 o'clock in the sanctuary. And I can only tell you that there were about 200 people at that park yesterday. It was an absolutely amazing, wonderful day that the Lord gave us. The Holy Spirit was present there. God was praised throughout. And I would just love to have every one of you and your neighbors, relatives, and uh, strangers that you run into show up here tonight. It's worth it. So love to see you tonight. Thanks a lot. And I'd also ask that you keep that concert in prayer. And there were eight churches represented in the park yesterday. Keep our Christian brothers and sisters in prayer. There is a need in this community, and God is willing to meet every one of those needs. Thank you so much. Also for an announcement, we have Carl Riker and Teresa Arita. Saturday night at 5 o'clock, we're starting a new Bible study called Christian Singles Bible Study. Now, who's heard of Christian Mingle? No one? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a singles dating thing on the internet. We are not that. Let's get this clarified right now, okay? We are a Christian Bible study for singles. Uh, divorced, widowed, never married. You want to come and grow in Christ? Please come and join us. Saturday nights at 5 o'clock, and there'll be... We'll have pizza. So come for that, if nothing else. And maybe a short worship time, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. A few more to go, and we will begin our worship service here this morning. Today, after the morning worship, we have the Coffee Fellowship down below in the vestry followed by our adult Sunday school class by Flo and Air. And again this evening at 6 p.m. at the Noah Cleveland concert in the sanctuary. During the course of the week, Tuesday, ladies, it's Sun Seekers and Clementines, please look at your bulletin for the times. Wednesday is the art class and the monthly gathering with the Alpha program. More info on that in the back page. Thursday, the clothes closet, and Saturday is, of course, what was just mentioned to you from Carl and Anita, uh, Sunday, single Bible study, and there's more information on that on the flip side of the insert. And I want to thank Reverend Allison Vanderlinden for filling in for Pastor Jim Grumbine this morning to bring us a wonderful message from the Word of God this morning. I would ask you to take a hold of your hymnals to 642 with responsive reading. Could you please stand if you are able? That's after, that's after this. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Invocation will be right after. Gotcha. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Stand firm in the faith. Be strong. 
Let us pray together. Father, again, you have blessed us this morning. You have given us life to be able to be here, to gather, to bring worship and praise to you, for you are so worthy of that. Uh, we have songs, and we have words, we have music, Lord. We just want to lift it all up to you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, this will all come together. In his precious holy name, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You'll take your hymnals. Your hymnals to 644. We're going to sing one, three, and five of Onward Christian Soldiers, and then over to 646.
comes up, and you may want to take your bulletin because the words are in the bulletin. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning again. Good morning. On this nice spring-like day. Isn't it a beautiful May day? We used to do Maypole dances where we'd go around the Maypole. Anybody do that? Okay, you guys, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, May baskets. Oh, okay. Well, our scriptures for this morning comes to us from Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Hear the word of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, 
for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Let me pray. Lord, I do thank you for this word. It's an amazing word. And your command to us to put on the armor of God is is a real privilege. And we invite your Holy Spirit now to minister to us through this reading of your holy word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. What a very sad time in our history with wars raging all around the world. I'm sorry, I, have, I need to upgrade my, <laughs> my earpiece here. <laughs> raging all around the world. What a most senseless, devastating battle going on between the Ukraine, Ukraine and Russia. And at these times, it is very difficult to see God at work. However, God still is very present in the most awful places that we can imagine. Our creator God, the sovereign one, is working his purposes out. While Christians and Muslims alike are being persecuted around the planet, God is in control of this vast universe. Amen? The question before us is wherein lies our hope amidst the rubble and the devastation and the blatant evil in our beautiful world. Our hope lies in the great news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Savior of the whole world. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, the one true creator, God, miraculously came into his planet Earth walked among the people in the flesh, healing, teaching, and preaching. Then after 33 years on earth, Jesus died a criminal's death on a cross to take the punishment for your sins and mine. Three days later, Jesus, the God-man, rose from the dead and appeared to over 500 people. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus ascended to the right hand of of the Father, our Creator God. Our hope, my dear friends, needs to be in Jesus, for he is the miracle of miracles and the hope for the world today. To encourage us during these days, I want to share some very important exhortation that Paul writes to the Ephesians. Paul exhorts the Christians in Ephesus to put on the armor to fight the many diverse battles that we find ourselves in. Before we upgrade our armor, let me give you a little background on the letter to the Ephesians written by Paul when he was in prison in Rome. Paul had planted this church in Ephesus on his second missionary journey, which was about 60 AD. And then on his third missionary journey, he stayed two years reasoning with the Jews and teaching new converts the principles of Christianity. Since Paul ended up in a Roman prison, probably chained to a guard, he had a good idea of what the armor looked like. He exhorts the Christians to stand and put on the armor of God, and we are to do the same every day. I believe strongly that God is wanting you and me to grow strong in the Lord as we experience evil on the rise, which scripture says will occur in the last days. Paul reminds the Christians that they, are, that they wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and world rulers of the darkness of this age and against the spiritual forces of the wickedness in the heavenly places. That's a lot of evil to wrestle against. Just as the Christians in Ephesus were told to put on their armor, Paul is offering us an upgrade in our armor. So let's get dressed now in armor. Now your armor can be any color, can be any size, and it could be in a color that you change every day. 
But remember, put on the armor of God in order to do what? To stand against the wiles of the devil. The first piece of armor Paul mentions is the belt of truth. A Roman soldier would put on his belt first because his breastplate was attached to it and his sword was held by it. Now, of course, we all know the importance of belts, which keeps our pants up, avoiding great shame and embarrassment. But belts also go around our waist, just like God's love wants to embrace us. And note that Paul said, t calls the belt truth. Remember, Jesus himself called himself what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, says Jesus. Jesus so wants us to experience his embrace, filled with the truth, honesty, love, and integrity that comes from the Holy Spirit. My friends, today we're living in a very pluralistic society. Well, people lie and they think nothing of it. Satan is the father of lies and he's deceiving people every day. Morality has become objective, I'm sorry, subjective and narcissistic, even tearing church denominations apart. The authority of scripture has taken a back seat in many theological discussions. God wants us to upgrade our armor, our belt of truth, so that we can do what? We can bring greater glory and honor to him by living in the truth of Jesus found in the scriptures. Several years ago, the movie Courageous was showing. I don't know if anybody saw that. Some of you did. It is about four sheriffs and a Spanish laborer whose name is Avatar. I mean, Avia, Aviar, sorry. These five men take a stand to be Christian fathers and hold each other accountable to high standards of living. In the movie, there is a scene with Aviar who's working in a factory and invited to become a manager. Aviar need, needs a raise, so he's very excited about the opportunity. The president of the company tells Aviar that he wants Aviar to lie about the shipments that come in. The president asks Aviar whether he would be comfortable falsifying invoices and, and gives Aviar a night to think about this job offer. Well, in the morning, Aviar comes to the, tells the president of the company that he will not take the position because he loves God and he wants to obey him. This, my friends, is what it means to be clothed with a belt of truth. If and when we are ever tempted to lie, to cheat, to steal, or commit any sin, let's remember that the belt of truth around our waist, hugging us and encouraging us to be honest and upright in our relationships and dealings with other people. Remember, every day, upgrade your armor in order to withstand the wiles of the devil. The next piece of armor is the breastplate of righteousness. And when we put on our breastplate of righteousness, we are putting on Jesus' acceptance of us so that we can enter into a love relationship with Almighty God. That's huge. The breastplate is a tunic-like garment that covers from the neck to the middle of the back, both front and back. And this breastplate, made with either heavy metal or leather or cloth or whatever, covers the soldier's heart. A guarded heart is a courageous heart. A protected heart is bold and fears not. With a breastplate of righteousness on, we all could use an upgrade by hearing these words from Jesus. I want you to think, put your name right at the beginning of this, and we're going to do it. And so I would say, Allison, I love you with an everlasting love and rejoice over you with singing. So put your name out and then say, I love you. Like, like uh, Pauline, Pauline say, Pauline, I love you. Okay. Here we go. You ready? Allison. You don't say Allison. You say your name. 
Okay, Alison, I love you. Okay, good. Well, okay, with everlasting love and rejoice over you with singing. So just keep remembering that. When we invite Jesus into our hearts, my friends, as Savior and Lord, something miraculous, see, amazing and divine happens. When Jesus hung on the cross 2,000 years ago, he paid the punishment for our sins. Now, can we really grasp that reality? That is a huge reality. Then a return Jesus gave us by faith, his righteousness. This divine exchange enables us to communicate with God and hear from him. Do you need an upgrade in your armor today? Listen to this great verse. 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in Jesus we might become what? The righteousness of God. Say the righteousness of God. Tomorrow when we get dressed, I want you to imagine Jesus rejoicing over you with singing, whispering love words in your ears. <clears throat> and don't let the lies of the evil one, don't let in the lies of the evil one, the criticism, the criticism of our spouse or the anger of our children or our grandchildren or maybe even our friends penetrate <clears throat> our armor. Let's stand on the truth of God's love and gift of righteousness to us. Remember, upgrade your armor every day with God's righteousness in order to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen? The third upgrade are shoes fitted on our feet for the gospel of peace. Now, sturdy shoes or boots in God's army are essential. Back in Paul's day, soldiers wore combat boots because they walked many miles over very tough, rough terrain. Sometimes they would step on a stake, maybe even a snake, that the enemy had planted to impale their, their enemy's feet. Salvation through Jesus brings peace to our hearts. Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called sons of God. Jesus wants you and me, my dear friends, to be called to remember as children of God to be peacemakers and not troublemakers. I'm sure that all of us here have had at least one argument with a loved one. And at that time of disagreement, God wants you and me to be willing to initiate reconciliation by the grace of his uh, Holy Spirit within us. God wants us to receive his forgiveness and offer grace to the harmed person. God hopes that you and I would choose to be the forgiving ones because this is what being a peacemaker is all about. And here's another great idea or reality, truth about peace. Shalom is the Hebrew word for peace, as you all know that, I'm sure. And it has a huge meaning, not just peace, but wholeness, healing, reconciliation with God, others, and ourselves. So when we put our sturdy shoes or boots on in the morning, maybe even with new shoelaces or clean socks, we are to walk out into that world with a shalom of Christ on our feet. Ooh, gives me chills. Just think about that. So do you need an upgrade in this area? Remember, to put on the armor of God because God wants you and you and each and every one of you to withstand the wiles of the devil and walk in the shoes of peace. The fourth piece of armor is the shield of faith. The shield of faith extinguishes all the flaming arrows. How many arrows does it extinguish? All, not one, not two, say all. I don't think you're convinced of that. Let's try that again. Say all. Oh. Okay, praise be the living God. Old Slewfoot, the devil, he flings arrows at us throughout the day. 
If there's somebody here that doesn't think that's true, just let me know. Talk to me afterwards. The question is, what do we do with these flaming arrows that wound us from time to time? We are ho to hold up our shield of faith. For by grace, you remember this verse, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works that no one would boast. If we are struggling with hatred, addiction, lies about ourselves, not liking ourselves, anger, condemnation, and the list goes on and you fill in the, block, the blanks. We are to stand, stand strong, stand in the authority that Jesus Christ has given to us through his word. In the name of Jesus Christ, command that temptation, that addiction, that enemy, whatever it is you are battling to go to the foot of the cross and be gone forever. So be it. James tells us that if we resist the devil, he will flee. However, with help of the Holy Spirit, we probably will need to resist him more than just one time. When David was going through a difficult time in his life, he wrote Psalm 3. And verse 3 of Psalm 3 says these words, You, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. There's a song to that. May Jesus be our glory and the lifter of our heads, and may we stand strong with a shield out in front of us. The fifth piece of armor is the helmet of salvation. Now, it's a good thing that Paul remembered to protect our heads, which contain our brains, our will, and our emotions. You see, God wants you and me to respond to his invitation to enter into a personal relationship with him. Listen carefully. Through Jesus' suffering and death, Jesus said, I love you. And through his resurrection, he said, I am alive and I desire to transform you more into my image. Wow, do we want to become, do we want to look like Jesus? Do we want to be nice like Jesus and loving and compassionate like Jesus? Boy, I sure do, but it's not easy. But through his ascension, ascension Jesus said, I am interceding for you here in heaven and look forward to living with you forever. If you responded positively to this invitation of love, pray that God gives you an upgrade so that your new armor protects your brain better. And if you haven't responded to God's marriage proposal, Ask Jesus to reveal himself to you so that you would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus, the God-man, is real and loves you unconditionally and most importantly, wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us every day. That's so precious. This leads us to the last and sixth piece of armor, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The Greek word for sword, get this, is the word from which we get our word machete. It's a two-edged sword with a hook at the end. The word of God is our spiritual utensil that helps us feed on God's word. Listen to this definition of the Word of God by the author of Hebrews. The Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and is able to discern the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. If you and I don't read God's Word every day, we will be wimpy, soldiers for Jesus Christ. God wants us, his readers of the Holy uh, Bible, to be strong in Jesus and stand against the enemy by knowing the scriptures and being able to rebuke Satan through them. 
So here's a question for you. Do you want to be a wimpy soldier? No, I don't think we do. I think we really want to be strong for Jesus. I know you guys want to be strong for Jesus. So turn to somebody and just say, I want to be strong in Jesus. One, two, three. Go ahead, Sam. Out loud. Out loud. They're not going to be able to hear you. Okay. That's a good thing to do. Just keep praying for that person you just uh, met, <laughs> talked to. Reading the Bible every day is a great way to upgrade your armor. And if you're reading God's Word five minutes today, increase it to ten minutes tomorrow. Throw in some praise music. Throw in some prayer. After all, God loves to dialogue with you. Not just monologue with you, but the dialogue. That's a two-way street. He wants to do it with all of us. God wants you and me, my friends, to, re to reflect his character in the world out there. And I know it's hard at times. As we pray the scriptures into our hearts, ask Jesus to change you to become more like him. Yes, we need to tell Jesus we are sorry when we mess up, but he promises to forgive us and, he's, and to see us through Christ's holiness. That's an amazing reality. Glory, hallelujah. Well, I hope that you can hope. I hope that you can hope in God's promise of salvation. Remember, we're all sinners, whether you think you are or not. I'm sorry to, for that bad news. But the good news is that we're saved by grace, God's grace. All people have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus has forgiven all. The only way to heaven is by receiving Jesus into your hearts, thanking him for dying for you, which we celebrate today, and inviting the Holy Spirit to change us and enable us to fellowship with our creator God. As Luke says in Acts, salvation is found in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So what are we to do every day? Put on your upgraded armor of God so that we can withstand the wiles of the devil. Let's end, uh, let me end with this quote from a book, book entitled Dear Jesus by Sarah Young. Imagine Jesus saying these words to you. Jesus speaks, I want you to begin each day viewing yourself as a chosen warrior ready to go to battle. Of course, there will be difficulties, but they need not be your focus. Put on the full armor I have provided, and you will be ready for whatever battles you have to fight. When you are engaged in combat, <clears throat> sorry, combat, look, keep looking to me for strength and guidance. Remember that you and I together can handle whatever difficulties come your way. Abandon yourself to the challenges I have shown for you. Then you will find your days increasingly devoted to sacred adventures shared with me, your King. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, our all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving God, with humility and thanksgiving, we come before your awesome presence. Thank you for coming into your world as Jesus to die a death to bring us life. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who helps us love you and others. Please, Jesus, deepen our love relationships with you this day. Help us sense more of your presence and power in our hearts and lives. Help us bring glory and honor to your name in all that we do and say. Remind us to put on our armor every day to ward off the wiles of the evil one. We humbly ask that you would continue to guide 
and direct us in this path you want us to, to minister as a congregation. Bring those dear people who need to know you into the body of believers. Help us embrace those in need of your love. Put names of people into our minds for whom we can pray. And perhaps someday invite to come to church. We pray for those on the prayer list who need your healing touch personally and powerfully. There are many, Lord, many needing your, your um, healing encouragement, Father God. You know the list that's here and the, the silent list that's in our hearts. Come Holy Spirit and minister to each and every one of them. We thank you for the band, the concert yesterday. We thank you for Noah and his wife. And we pray for the concert tonight. We pray you would draw people there. They would hear the words of truth. And on a much heavier note, we pray for your mighty strength to stop the war between Russia and Ukraine. May your will be done, and, and we hope for victory. We pray for the complete end of COVID. We pray for your mighty intervention in the Southwest where there's a major immigration crisis. Grant those in charge tremendous compassion and wisdom to manage the turmoil. Thank you for all the first responders and frontline people working long hours to serve our country. Grant them new strength, perseverance, grace, and mercy to do their jobs well. We pray for our academic facilities, our communities, and our governments, all desperately in need of your power and grace poured out upon them. Help people turn from their evil ways and find love and forgiveness in you. Come, Holy Spirit, descend upon us afresh this day and bring revival to your beautiful world all around us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. Turn with me now to the bulletin, please, and I would like us to recite this uh, model prayer for putting on armor. We're going to say it together. Are you, anybody need a copy? Hope not. OK, are you ready? I. Put, Put on, on the, belt the Bible of truth. truth. Lord, help, help me, me desire, desire, speak, and act in your truth. I, I put on the breastplate of righteousness. Thank, Thank you for, for the, the gift of your Holy Spirit who enables me to choose to live righteously. I put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Help me be a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. I put on the helmet of salvation. Save me, Lord, from the world of the flesh and the devil. Grant me your mind and heart to feel and think as you do. I take the shield of faith in my hand to quench all the flaming arrows of the enemy. Finally, I take up the sword of the Spirit and tell Satan to go to the foot of the cross where he was defeated. In Jesus' name, we humbly state this prayer. Amen. And before we celebrate communion, I'd like to invite my friend Lena Conda to come up, and she and Kathy will bless us in song. was 
Thank you, ladies. If you are able, would you please stand, take your hymnal to number 753 as we prepare for our Blessed Communion. Welcome to our time of communion. It's an amazing gift that God has given to us. So I invite each and every one of you who have professed Jesus as your Lord and Savior to partake these elements. I'm going to say a prayer of consecration. We'll just then eat together and then with a prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meal that you have set aside for us to represent your incredible sacrifice. They represent your body and your blood that we might have your righteousness through your shed blood and body. So come now, Holy Spirit, and we ask that you would take these common everyday elements and put them and put your spiritual presence into them so that we might walk out of here having partaken and feel stronger as a result of being fed by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we open these little guys up. We take out the patent if you can do it. If you can't, raise your hand. Uh, take, eat, and give thanks to the amazing gift God has given to us in Jesus. And in likewise form, he took 
The cup said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you. Take, drink, and give thanks. Let me pray. Lord, we do thank you for this gift. We thank you for yourself. We thank you for coming miraculously into the world, living an amazing life, dying for us so that we might be able to re-enter your fellowship. I pray for each and every one of us here today, Lord, that as we go forth into this world, we would feel stronger, we will feel dressed in your armor to do the battling that we need to be doing to help people know you. Lord, open up opportunities for each and every one of us to, to uh, share you with somebody this week, Lord, whoever it might be. Give us those very, um, what's the word, gentle introductory questions and invitations. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are able, would you please stand and take your hymnal to number 641, Lead on, O King Eternal. to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power now and forevermore and may the blessing of this incredible God be upon each and every one of you now and forevermore amen God bless you all